Inside of a German cemetery, decades after they'd been executed, a number of former concentration camp guards were reinterred after they'd been dug up and disturbed in their graves. Bergen-Belsen was a concentration camp which was a huge site of depravity and evil, and throughout the Second World War thousands of prisoners succumbed to disease and starvation there. When the British liberators entered the camp, there were around 10,000 corpses lying unburied around the site, but there were a number of former guards who were captured amongst the prisoner population. Some of these tried to hide to escape justice, and many former guards fled the camp to do this too, but there were a number of men and women who were brought to trial for their crimes. Amongst the guards was the Commandant Josef Kramer and a number of female guards, some of whom were very young when they entered the camp and began to inflict suffering and execution on a huge scale. But what is the story of the exhumations of the executed guards of Bergen-Belsen? To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. When the Liberators entered Bergen-Belsen, they found a camp which was overcrowded and there was much suffering. Many people had succumbed to diseases and conditions at the site, and a reporter summed up the feeling. He said, Here over an acre of ground lay dead and dying people. You cannot see which was which. The living lay with their heads against the corpses and around them moved the awful, ghostly procession of emaciated, aimless people, with nothing to do, with no hope of life, unable to move out of your way, unable to look at the terrible sights around them. Babies have been born here, tiny wise and things that could not live. A mother, driven mad, screamed at a British sentry to give her milk for her child, then thrust a tiny mite into his arms and ran off crying terribly. This day at Belson was the most horrible of my life. There was a huge amount of horror, and the British did not initially have the amount of manpower to clean up the camp, and they then forced the SS guards who had worked there to also bury the bodies, and many of those were brought to do the job were women who had been placed under arrest. Many of the former SS guards who survived the typhus epidemic and remained in charge at Belsen were taken to the Belsen trials. There were at least 480 people who had worked there, but there were only 45 brought to trial, including former Commandant Josef Kramer and 16 female SS guards. There were a number of women including Irma Grazer, Elizabeth Volkenrath and Johanna Bormann who became known for their brutal treatment and executions. These three women had worked inside of different concentration camps. Bormann was known as the woman with the dogs, and she would work inside of Auschwitz too, and she would encourage her dog to maul and attack people inside of Belsen, and her big wolfhound would savage helpless inmates. Elizabeth Falkenrath was in her early 20s when she first entered a concentration camp, and she would become one of the most powerful women in the whole of the system. She started life in the SS working at Ravensbrück, and was trained by Maria Mandel, a well-known female overseer, before she was then sent to Auschwitz, and then Bergen-Belsen. Volkenrath was known for beating prisoners and for carrying out selections and executions, but one of the most notorious female guards was Irma Grazer. She was known as a beautiful beast, and was also in her twenties when she was led to the hangman's noose. She worked inside of Auschwitz too, and she would execute and shoot prisoners, who were said to not be working hard enough, and if someone dared to look at her the wrong way, then she would happily execute them, or send them to the gas chambers. Despite hundreds of men working at Bergen-Belsen, there were only a few dozen who were ever punished for their crimes. The vast majority escaped any form of punishment. Of those who were condemned to death, there was Josef Kramer, the beast of Belsen, who was a commandant. Kramer was responsible for the conditions of the camp, and he could have got help and further resources for the camp if he asked, but he chose to continue the suffering of the inmates. Fritz Klein was a doctor of death, and he would serve inside of Auschwitz as a camp doctor for the women's camp. He also took part in selections when people were sent to their deaths in the gas chambers. He was anti-Semitic and was a brutal man, who believed his slaughterous work was justified. Peter Weingartner was another former guard who was sentenced to death, and Franz Hörsler was also one of the most ruthless guards in the whole concentration camp system. Hörsler would be responsible for executions and gassings, and one SS camp doctor recorded of his actions one day that, in connection with the gassings I described in my diary, I declare that on that day, around 1,600 Dutch were gassed. This is an approximate figure, which I stated as a result of what I'd heard from others. The action was led by SS officer Hersler. I remember he tried to drive the whole group into a single bunker. This he achieved up to the last man, who could not be crammed further into it. Hersler shot this man with a revolver. This is the reason why I wrote in the diary, 
gruesome scene at the last bunker, Herslar. He would drive thousands into the gas chambers, and there were other staff who were also condemned to death. Carl Francho was a cook who was condemned, and he was someone along with Ansgar Pichon, who became known for killing in the kitchens. These men would shoot prisoners inside of the kitchens, who were caught stealing morsels of food. If they picked up potato peelings, they were shot in cold blood. Franz Stoeffel, along with his deputy Wilhelm Dürr, were also condemned to death, as these men had led a death march to Belsen, which had resulted in the horrific executions of many who were shot at the side of a road for not walking quick enough or for trying to escape. Regarding the executions of the men and women of Bergen-Belsen, these were all carried out in Hamlin Prison, which was held by the British after the war, and it would be British executioner Albert Pierpoint who would act as a hangman. Before the executions were carried out, Pierpoint days before, along with his assistant, individually met the condemned guards, and he then took their height and their weight to make sure he could calculate the drop required to snap their necks when they fell through the trap door. The executions were all carried out on the 13th of December 1945, and the women went first, with Volkenrath being the first to go through the execution chamber, which had been fitted with simultaneous gallows to make the job quicker and more efficient. When one person plunged through the trap door, Pierpoint would then get the next, and two people would be condemned within minutes before the first was then declared dead. It was said of Irma Grazer's execution that, We climbed the stairs to the cells where the condemned were waiting. A German officer at the door leading to the corridor flung open the door, and we fired past the rows of faces into the execution chamber. The officer stood at attention. Brigadier Patton Walsh stood with his wristwatch raised. He gave me the signal, and a sigh of released breath was audible in the chamber. I walked into the corridor. Irma Grazer, I called. The German guards quickly closed all of the other grills of the twelve inspection holes, and opened one door. Irma Grazer stepped out. The cell was far too small for me to go inside, and I had to pinion her in the corridor. Follow me, I said in English, and O'Neill repeated the order in German. At 9.34am, she walked into the execution chamber, gazed for a moment at the officials standing round it, then walked on to the centre of the trap, where I'd made a chalk mark. She stood on this mark very firmly, as I placed a white cap over her head, she said in her languid voice, Schnell. The drop crashed down, and the doctor followed me into the pit and pronounced her dead. After 20 minutes, the body was taken down, and placed in a coffin ready for burial. This was repeated until all of the former staff of Belson who had been condemned were inside of coffins. They would be declared dead after a short while hanging, then placed inside of the coffin. After executions of war criminals, many authorities decided to burn the remains of those, for example after the Nuremberg trials, the condemned Nazi war criminals would be cremated, and their ashes were then scattered. But this was surprisingly not the case with the executed guards of Bergen-Belsen. Following being placed into coffins, these were then buried in graves inside of the prison yard of Hamlin Prison, a short distance from where they were executed. But there came a time where the British gave up control of the prison, and because of this the graves of the executed guards were then disturbed. The coffins were dug up and disinterred, and this included Kramer, Grazer, Volkenrath and all the others whom Pierpoint had executed. In 1950 the British officially handed Hamlin back to the Germans, and at this point there was a worry about pro-Nazi groups in the country. Some people shockingly wanted to give those executed guards a proper and decent burial, and a Nazi send-off, and it was in March 1954 when the bodies were officially exhumed, and the ground was broken, and these guards dug up. The coffins were exhumed, and specialists identified each of the remains, and their bones were then placed inside of new coffins, and these were prepared for reburial elsewhere. 91 bodies were exhumed, and these were the former Nazi executed war criminals, and they were then buried inside the nearby Amvel Cemetery in Hamlin. This cemetery previously held the remains of World War I soldiers, but it would now hold the remains of the executed Nazi guards of Bergen Belsen. There were strict instructions to prevent this becoming a shrine, as no memorials were allowed on the graves, but then wooden crosses would be used to mark the burial sites if families paid for it. This led to masses of wooden crosses being paid for by pro-Nazi groups, and there was a lot of controversy regarding the reburial. One newspaper article stated that British occupation authorities refused to interfere with German authorities who moved the bodies from a mass grave to individual plots in the city cemetery, 
after a campaign by neo-Nazi elements in Hamlin, Lower Saxony. 30 of the 90 bodies of the executed Nazi war criminals have already been moved from a common mass grave near Hamlin and reinterred in the city cemetery. The remaining bodies will be moved later on. Amongst those reburied are Josef Kramer, named the Beast of Belsen, by the inmates of the notorious death camp, and Irma Grazer, who hounded women prisoners at Belsen. But these exhumations and reburials would cause a significant amount of criticism. There were many neo-Nazis who would visit the gravesite, then hold rallies inside of the cemetery. But after the years went on, there were calls to hide the gravesite to deter trouble. The crosses and memorials were removed, and today the gravesite is just a plain field off a path, and there are no references to the evil former guards of Bergen Belsen that are laid to rest there, a short distance from their execution site. The guards of Bergen Belsen were responsible for some of the worst war crimes in history, and these men and women had no regard for the lives of prisoners. They all had blood on their hands and were murderers, but it is surprising that despite the amount of criticism, a decision has not been made to scatter the ashes of these people once and for all. But too much time has passed now, and some people regard disturbing the remains of people executed almost 80 years ago, and to burn them as inappropriate. But this did happen for Rudolf Hess, whose gravesite became too much of a problem, that his remains were interred, and his ashes would then be scattered. But the former guards of Bergen-Belsen were some of the most evil Nazi war criminals the world has ever seen. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.